Hey guys, NJ here, and we're having a look at a new Ready Eddy frame. This is the Beast SX, which refers to the stretched X layout. Now, you guys will probably know by now that I am a uh, big fan of the Beast X, which was the original design. Um, this is my main freestyle quad. I will put a link in the description. Uh, actually, I'll just pop it up in the top there, uh, where I talk about this frame and walk around with all the components and why I absolutely love it. Um, designed by the absolutely brilliant Sharon Otmosgin, so a big shout out to him. Um, one of the reasons this was born is because uh, Sharon was asked uh, several times to produce a stretched X unibody version. Uh, it came from lots of people that said we absolutely love the design of the uh, Beast X and could you do a stretched X version? So he modified the design and, and made this uh, second frame now available. So in terms of uh, how this works, as I said, it is a unibody design. It is made out of the same high quality uh, military grade carbon um, and it really is super tough this stuff. I mean, I've absolutely abused my Beast X and um, yeah, it's still going absolutely strong, tough as nails. Um, so this stuff I can, I can say firsthand is really, really good quality. Um, there's been a few changes here, which um, I think has, has made it even higher quality, which is that they they have now actually, if I tilt this at the right angle, you can see all the edges right round the quad here are chamfered, which is just fantastic. So there's no vibrating uh, arms cutting through your zip ties or any wires. It's all just absolutely perfect straight out of the uh, out of the gates, which is an excellent thing to have, have added and just goes to show the high quality and detail that they like to put into their frames. Um, if I flip that over, this uh, is continued by um, now adding the little recesses there um, for the screw heads or the bolt heads rather so yeah it's just it, it feels so premium as soon as you pick it up now one of the things uh, that you will have to um, sacrifice ever so slightly is the rigidity it is going to be a little bit less rigid than say the standard arrangement with separate arms on something like the beast x and if i flip that over i can show you how um, obviously you've got a top plate uh, a lower brace plate and then the arms in the middle uh, the formula arms in the middle so this uh, under good compression as it is makes for an incredibly stiff center section and yeah there is just no flex flex in this and it really is incredibly tough but even though you are sacrificing a little bit of that rigidity what you are gaining or rather losing is um, weight because those extra plates aren't there this will come in a little bit lighter which is good for those people that tend to like um, stretch X designs which is normally the racers um, a little word on the stretched X design itself now I know it's a fairly new ish concept it's been around for well it's been around a little while but everyone has uh, you know think thinks of it as a fairly new concept in terms of its geometry there's nothing new about this of course you must realize that this is in fact the exact same motor geometry of an H frame and those have been around since the birth of, of quadcopters and certainly since the mini, mini quad scene started taking off and it's still a popular design now things like the Vortex and TBS Vendetta etc etc um, it's a well tested and proven uh, geometry that works works well uh, one of the advantages of, of this layout obviously that, that people do tend to mention I don't think it's that big of an issue when it comes to quadcopters but um, having the front and rear rear motors a little further apart means that when it's tilted into the wind the induced airflow will mean that you have a little bit more clean air reaching the back props as they're a little bit further above and out the way of the front props. Um, anything aerodynamic when it comes to uh, aerodynamic and fluid dynamic discussions with quadcopters, I mean, it's a real conundrum anyway because there's, there's literally nothing that quadcopters offer in terms of uh, aerodynamics and that is why you can take a 1300 milliamp 4S like this and stick it on a, uh, an FPV wing and fly for 40 minutes and you can stick it on one of these and I know some of you real nutters can get through your battery in probably like a minute and a half um, so yeah we, we negate all of that by just um, adding lots and lots of power but anyway um, back to the frame itself so we've we've had a look at the base plate included in the kit we also get this which is we have the hardware at the top we have those nice uh, 7075 uh, aircraft grade aluminium side frames um, there are the carbon side plates which go on these you don't have to put them on they just offer you a few more mounting options with rip tie holes etc um, but if you're a racer again and this is your thing you might want to just sacrifice uh, 
you don't want to sacrifice the weight so you, you again you don't have to put those on and these are in the nice anodized black which uh, they, they have the options for silver or black so yeah hardware at the top you've also got the SMA uh, pigtail mount we have a riser plate here and this is designed to hold the included Micro Matec uh, PDB. This is a one 5S with a 5 and 12 volt reg on board. Uh, that would mount on top of that plate and then go in the center stack. Um, I'm not going to be using that. Um, I will be going for a different option, uh, which I shall show you in a second. Instead, I will use this more likely as a uh, top plate rather than a riser plate for that PDB to mount my VTX or um, receiver, etc. There is the top plate of the, the main frame, and then we also have included, which is nice, a battery protector plate, because obviously this is an underslung battery, so having that there just helps out with any hard arrivals uh, so that you don't put dings and dents into your battery, and obviously the uh, the included strap will pass through there um, so that's the main part of the kit there I have also opted to get the um, uh, the FPV cam protector which goes on the front um, which looks nice and uh, looks nice and aero doesn't it and it's uh, I'm not sure what it's printed out of um, but it's quite flexible yet very stiff so um, this stuff's really good uh, Sharon has actually put the STL file up on Thingiverse I believe so anyone can download and print these if they want but they are available on the store over on Ready Eddy's shop in various colours uh, should you want to buy one and include it with your kit when you get it um, what else am I going to be putting into this build? So I'm going to go with the Betaflight F3. Um, I've heard lots of good things about this. This is uh, the PDB. It has a current sensor. It has a fantastic OSD, which allows you to tune your PIDs and see various bits and pieces, all configurable within the Betaflight GUI. Um, so yeah, this, this is going to be a pretty cool board. I've heard lots of good things about it. It has the MPU 6000 gyro, which is my favorite. Really good at uh, ignoring... Uh, nasty vibrations so yeah that guy is going to go in which is also why I'm not using the Matec PDB because it has one built in so we're going to go with that in terms of the motors I have been sent these to test which I'm very excited about also uh, my favorite motor at the minute is the Cobra 2207 2450s. Um, I'll talk more about those in a, a later date, but they are they are really fantastic. Um, I'm going to go with these on this build. These are the um, RS Special Edition Emax motors, and they are in 2400 kV. 2400 kV is just my perfect kV that I have found uh, when it comes to that nice balance between power and efficiency um, for you know around that three minute flight mark, but with lots of power when when you need it. And these motors. Uh, especially this one and the Cobras uh, and the ZMX X25s which you know I use are very torquey motors as well um, so they work really well with those slightly heavier props um, like my favourite props which are the Cyclone V1 and V2s um, so this will, will match up nicely for the kind of thing I'm, I'm looking for again links in the description for these um, so I'm going to be installing those what else have I got here to play with um, because I've lost a bit of weight um, I'm going to afford putting in a nice uh, LED setup for the underside, uh, cutting these into se six sections, uh, sorry, sections of six LEDs, should I say. Um, this is the Chroma Kit, which is, uh, I'll put a link in the description to this guy. Um, it's a push button operation. And yeah, it's it, it looks really cool. I'm quite interested to put that in. You may be wondering why I want to add weight when I've lost weight, well, let me tell you, I always try and build to around between 590 and 600 grams for my builds. And there is a reason for that. As a freestyle pilot, there is a certain amount of inertia in the quad when it comes to maneuvers, when, you know, a project, as it's projectile, uh, it's trajectory, should I say, uh, when I'm going through certain maneuvers where it's falling. All of those things have a certain inertia, a weight and a feel in the sticks. And if I go with a super light quad, it really messes with my maneuvers. It, you really have to read, and that goes for flying 130s and light quads. You you have to rethink and relearn your how you fly. And I've just found that six around that 590 to 600 grams is just perfect. I love the weight and how it. Uh, the trajectory of the quad when I back the throttle off and I'm throwing it over a, a tree or you know how that works in terms of its inertia the weight and the feel 590 to 600 grams just works wonderfully for me so that's why I build to that specific uh, kind of weight territory 
if I was racing, it would be different. I'd you know I'd go for super fast rates with minimal expo, and I'd go for the lightest quad I could. Um, but when it comes to the kind of freestyle I'm doing, this is why I build to these specific weights. So I'm hoping it will come in at around that um, that all up, and I'm, I'm obviously talking about the inclusion of the GoPro camera as well uh, as the battery. I'm not talking about you know the dry weight without those things. That would be absolutely ludicrous. Um, so what else have I got? I am also going to be installing, uh, and I've talked about these before, these are my favourite ESCs, these are the Spedex ES30 High Volts, um, these are 3 to 6S, they are D-Shot 600 ready out the gate, they are lighter than pretty much every ESC in their class, and uh, they're smooth as butter, I've tested them up to 5S, I've never had a single D-Sync, they're, they're just fantastic ESCs, can't recommend these enough, I'll put links in the description to these. If you get them from the uh, store that I link, um, there will also be a uh, possibility to use an NJ Tech code on those to get you a little more off, and they're like £8.50 here in the UK, they're, they're cheaper than most ESCs in their class as well. Can't rate those enough, so yeah, those guys are going in, and I think that pretty much does it, just having to run through this box a bit. No, there is one more thing, hold on, hold on. There is the Foxeer Monster, V2. Now um, you'll probably notice I've already put up a quick video, some flight footage. I've got one of these mounted in my GT2 because I run the Commander uh, V1 goggles by Aonway, and there'll be a review on that coming. Um, they are a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, so um, I thought, well, I've got a 16 by 9 aspect, why not try a 16 by 9 aspect camera? And although I was initially quite concerned that it was 1200 TVL, which made me concerned about the latency, and a CMOS sensor, yikes, it's getting worse. Um, I am pleasantly surprised by how good the quality of image is. There is no perceivable latency to me um, at all uh, that I can tell. It feels really very, very good. And uh, on stock settings, which is what I put up with the, the video so far, um, it's really very good. It needs some color tweaking, but um, I'm liking the quality of this. So I'm going to be putting one of these Monster V2s into the Beast um, to go nicely along with my 16x9 goggles. So first things first, I always like to do a dry fit. Um, the main reason for that is because I want to make sure that everything lines up properly. I've got a good idea of how this thing will go together. And uh, it also gives me a chance to eyeball the quad once it's built up and see where I'm going to place the components so although it seems like you're going forwards to go backwards it does actually speed your build up to do so so let's get these out of the bag and start to put this guy together